not just carbon dioxide, but also methane and nitrous oxide. And their effects on our climate and the biodiversity of this planet. The authors conclude that even a rise of two degrees in global temperatures is too great. And I quote, a rise of two degrees over pre-industrial temperatures will initiate climate feedbacks in the ocean, on ice sheets, and on the tundra, taking the Earth well past the significant tipping points. As we have seen, likely impacts include the large-scale disintegration of the Greenland and West Antarctic ice sheets, the extinction of an estimated 15 to 40% of the plant and animal species, dangerous ocean acidification, and so on and so on. With these changes fresh in the reader's minds, the authors propose that it should not be acceptable to be considering a level of greenhouse gas emissions that will cause environmental degradation, and propose that the aim should be to keep the Earth in a safe climate zone. In considering the response that is necessary to achieve this aim, the authors then provide convincing arguments that there is indeed a climate emergency, and hence the title of this book, Climate Code Red. The third section of the book, entitled The Climate Emergency, contains a fascinating and frightening discussion of the reasons for declaring it as an emergency. Two telling quotations that they use in the book are worth recounting. The policy analyst George Monbiot states, when you warn people about the dangers of climate change, they call you a saint. When you explain what needs to be done to stop it, they call you a communist. Everyone is watching and waiting for everyone else to move. They also quote Churchill when he faced the grim reality of the situation in World War II and said, I need no need for cheering dreams. Facts are better than dreams. This latter quotation leads the reader to consider the facts and the scenarios about climate change and to appreciate the dimensions of the problem, complicated by the need for global action involving countries with diverse priorities and at vastly different stages of their development. It also emphasizes that the Allies in World War II did respond to the challenges by transforming their economies within a short period of time to one providing their wartime needs. In doing so, the country's concerns, such as the USA, increased its military expenditure from 1% of national income in 1939 to 42% in 1942-1944. And, uh, similarly, uh, in the UK, the United Kingdom moved from 15% in 1939 to 40 to 55% in the years 1940-1944. Further, unemployment in the USA decreased from 14.6% in 1940 1.9% in 1945, while the gross national product grew 55% in five years. They use these figures to indicate that solutions can be found when the facts are confronted and the reality of a degraded and unrecognizable planet is contemplated. For instance, there will be a need to support the developing countries if global solutions are to be found. The authors indicate that the estimate of the cost of providing all the households in India with power by 2030 would be approximately $120 billion US, and that this would double if it came from renewable resources. That would translate into $20 billion per year for 15 years, or just 3% of the $700 billion annually spent by the USA on military and intelligence issues in 2007. As another example, the cost of climate providing climate safe power to all countries outside the OECD would be $30 billion per annum, just 0.1% of the total annual production of the OECD. Small when you consider that 33% or more of the national income 
that the only of the antagonists uh, were spent, the antagonists in World War II uh, were spent by those countries. Gestures such as, for instance, providing underdeveloped countries with power sources from renewable energy may well be the sort of break that is necessary uh, to remove the stalemate in trying to broker global arrangements about such issues as climate action. The book reviews a range of approaches to solve the climate change problem and can give the reader an understanding that much can be done if the sense of urgency can replace the slow pace of change in many countries. In examining the reasons for the pro pro slow progress, the authors raise their concerns as to whether democratic systems of government with elections every third for his willingness to facilitate the dissemination of this critical information by publishing this book. It's my delight to launch climate change.